Show for Blues by Memphis Minnie. She recorded this in uh, 1941, accompanied by her husband's little son Joe. So it a, was a guitar duet because Minnie played the lead and son Joe played like that, a uh, very strong rhythmic uh, backup guitar. So I tried to put this in one arrangement and using an alternating bass throughout. And I think that's the difficult part of this song. The alternating bass, well, it moves between the fifth and the sixth string, then it goes to the sixth and the fourth string, and in the A, where we play the A chord, it goes from five, four, six, five, four, six, and so on. So that's the difficult part of this song, I guess. And to get a real rhythmic feel, and also to do some, uh, some muting, of course, to get that get that uh, swing feel, I'm muting and accenting the second and the fourth beats, uh, especially when there's nothing going on in, in the melody notes. Now, we're in standard tuning. When I have a capo at the second fret, it facilitates uh, singing this for me anyway, and also a few positions because we're going, I'm going to do this 
and that's uh, well will be more difficult if you don't use a capo. And of course the capo is the zero fret, so if I say the third fret, actually it's the fifth fret then, but I say third fret. Okay, uh, I'll play the arrangements slowly, and oh yeah, by the way, in the video description you can find a uh, tap to the accompaniment. And I also did a lesson uh, for the solos, but that's, uh, well, you'll find more info in the video description. But the tap to the accompaniment is free, and I think if you can play that, you can figure out the solos of yourself. Okay, I'm going to play the arrangement as slow as possible. And here we go. So we're starting with a slide, and the slide is, well, sort of, um, you cannot say it's from the second to the uh, seventh verse, uh, sorry, uh, fret. It starts somewhere at the first fret, and then it stops around the sixth fret, and the next beat is the open E string, and it's that what determines the sound, I think, like that. And I'm anchoring, I'm, I'm putting my index finger, also using that for the slide, on the 7th fret. In a way I'm playing a partial B7 shape, which is at the 7th fret an E chord. So that's why we're getting away, these are two e, E's by, uh, by the way, E and E. And putting my 2nd uh, finger and 3rd finger on the 1st and 2nd string to do those. And the bends are, well, slightly, not, 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 not like that, but just slight bends. And you notice the alternating bass go from 0, 7, 0, 7 to 0, 2, 0, 2. I mean 2, the second fret, of course. Noticing the muting with my right hand palm of the second and the fourth beat. And I'm hitting that second and the fourth beat in the tap is only one string, otherwise it becomes too, too cluttery. Uh, but I'm hitting hard enough that the underlying strings are also hurt. And it's an E chord and an E7 chord. And that's why it's important to, to grab the chords, to fret the chord, because if you don't, then open strings might train. If you simply put your finger on the second fret and don't play the chord, that's a big difference. And so we go. rest well I, I let this ring for two beats but you don't have to you can play that you can do too it's just a uh, well uh, the choice you make it's a little rhythmic uh, variation okay then we go to an A chord and it's the partial A chord on the 5th fret, well, normally a bar, but I only play 7th fret, 6th fret and 5th uh, fret on the 4th, 3rd and 2nd fret uh, string, sorry. So what we're doing is... Yeah. 
I'm not using a bar because I'm going to use the open string here and that's why I simply do the hammer on I place my index finger on the third string fifth fret do the hammer on and then I place it on the second string fifth fret and these are the same notes but they have different, uh, well, uh, character because one is shredded and the other isn't, and so it's, uh, it's a nice effect, I think. Notice the muting also. If you don't do it, it sounds pretty awful. No swing at all. And notice also the alternating bass going from a 5th, 4th, 6th string. If that's too difficult for you, you can do of course, uh, simply stay in the 5th and 4th fret, that pattern. Like that. And now we're going back to our partial, well, B7 chord. And you'll see in the tap, the first beat uh, I put uh, the open first string, E string, in the parenthesis. Sometimes I play it, sometimes I don't. If you play it uh, as an instrumental you should play it because it's really a melody note. But if you sing it, uh, it will not be uh, noticed that you don't play it. So. Little variation there. And the, the pull-off in the 11th measure is spread over two beats. So you start and then when you hit the fifth string, you pull off. So it's only picked once, like that. Back to our E and then a B7. And then we go back to our E. E6, E7. Nice melodic run in our B7 chord. And I know that the A is not, uh, well, you should be well surprised maybe a little bit, but if you grab your B7 here, you notice that this one is an A, so why not use it in the bass? Okay, where were we? If a fourteenth uh, measure, so slide up, pinky on the seventh fret, release it, pinky seventh fret, first string then, and then slide down sixth fret down to the open, and. Um, when we go into that A7, I grab it with my second finger on the second string, second fret, and the index on the second fret, fourth string, because, well, we're going to need our pinky here in, on the fifth fret. So, and that slide, I don't touch it, I just slide it. So that 16th measure sounds like this. Second, the fourth string slide to the second fret, you hardly hear it, but it is there. And well, you could play that on the fifth fret as well, but it's a bit awkward. I tried it out and I prefer this to do this. And this one rings. And these as well. Now we have a sort of a turnaround. Now I stole that lick from a German, an excellent German guitarist called Reiner Brun. And if I don't forget it, I will put a link to his uh, channel 
in the video description. He's an excellent uh, blues man and has a lot of songs on YouTube. Uh, lesser known songs, by, by the way, sometimes. And quite interesting. So, I'm sliding up. Third finger on the second string. Second finger on the first string. And my index on the fifth string. Seventh fret, ninth fret, seventh fret. And that's going to be the difficult, the most difficult run, I think, especially at speed. And then going back down to a B7. B7. All right, that was the whole arrangement. And um, I'll do it once because you can use this as the vocal accompaniment as well. Won't you be my chauffeur? Won't you be my chauffeur? I want you to drive me. I want you to drive me downtown. Oh, when she drives so easy. Can't turn it down, was it? I can't turn it down. All right, that was it for Memphis Mini and me and my show for blues. Be sure to listen to the original. Uh, it's quite a great song.